topic of today is your daily routine must be built around your life assignment. Your daily routine must be built around your life assignment. You remember we are talking this week about problems? Oh, sorry, Cynthia is writing here. Cynthia Waters, pray for my town. My town experiencing flooding due to aftermath of Hurricane Matthew. Oh, okay. Father, in Jesus' name, we are praying for that town. We are praying for Cynthia and her city. We pray that you will intervene over that city. You will intervene over that town. You bring your peace to the whole of uh, Caribbean and America, Florida, every area, every place where people are experiencing some kind of uh, flood or hurricane or anything like that. In Jesus' name, we proclaim your peace. We say, peace be still to all those situations that are happening all over the place. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, let me quickly repeat the topic for today again. And the topic is your daily routine must be built around your life assignment. Now, let's start by saying that this week we are talking about problems. And the idea of problems in the sense, of, in, in the sense for which, uh, that I'm talking about in this week is that all of us were sent to this world to resolve one problem or the other. So we are all sent to this world for a problem, for the purpose of resolving one problem or the other. That's why we are sent here. Now, knowing that, that is our assignment. So uh, we, all, <laughs> we all have uh, an assignment that we are commissioned to do on earth. We are here on earth to do something for God. We are here to fulfill his assignment and his mission, his goal for our lives. So like I said uh, already yesterday, there is no human being that was sent here to this world to just be a bench warmer. And there is no human being that was sent to this world to just be, um, you know, a share leader. You know, just a, a fan and, and uh, somebody that is just, you know, clapping for other people. You are not here to build another man's destiny. You are not here to build another man's faith. You are not here to build another man's vision. You are not here to build another man's purpose or, or to carry out another man's assignment. Every one of us that was sent to this world by God Almighty have their own assignment. Now, if your assignment is to minister to another person or to build other person's uh, uh, vision, that is good if you are sure that's your assignment. But there is an assignment for everybody. There is a mission, a purpose, and a goal for every individual. Before you are even born, God had assigned for you what you are supposed to do with your life on the earth. Yeah, there is a mission God had the mapped out for you and for your destiny. You are here for a purpose. No one is here by accident. You are not here by accident. And no matter what you say your purpose is, no matter what you say that your vision is, or no matter what you think you are supposed to do here, your problem, your, your mission has something to do with problems. Your, your assignment always has something to do with problems. So there are people that are sent to this world to resolve the problem of Nigerian economy. And unfortunately, most of those people are just sitting down in their churches and they are bringing their tithe and offering and they are making the pastor happy and making everybody in the church happy. And they themselves are happy that at least they are bringing, <laughs> that they are bringing their, their, their tithe and offering. And uh, unfortunately, that is not enough. You know, if, you, if God is giving you an assignment to fix a nation's economy and you are just happy that you are bringing tithe and offering, you know, you have failed God. You have let God down. And there are a lot of other people that have been called and with an assignment by God to fix the infrastructure of their country or to fix the electricity of their country or to fix the pro social problems of their country or to fix the problem of the youth of their country or to fix the problem of the women of their country or to stop the problem of uh, rape or to stop the problem of abuse. Children abuse, child abuse, uh, f you know, 
family abuse, uh, domestic abuse, all kind of abuse. That is what your calling may be, and you know it, but you are going to church, and you are you are just happy and satisfied that you are a church goer, that you are, you know, that, that everybody sees you on Sunday as if that is a calling. There is nobody that has a calling to just be a bench warmer. There is nobody that has a calling just to go to church to show up and let the pastor be happy. That is not a calling. You know, there are, the Bible says in um, Jeremiah that before you were formed in your mother's womb, that he, 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 he shows you, he, he, he called you. And while you are still in your mother's womb, he anointed you for an assignment, for a task that you must carry out here on earth. And everybody has task and calling and assignment has to do with the problem. You know, uh, the Bible tells us that it is when God had the cry, the heart cry, and the weeping and the wailing of the children of Israel in Egypt that he decided to give birth to Moses. So God decided to give birth to you only because there is an assignment he had already identified before your birth, even before he put, he put you in your mother's womb. There is an assignment, there was an assignment, it is for the raising of that assignment that you are formed in the first place. God decided to even make you who you are. God decided to even create you. God decided to even bring your father and mother together only because he had an assignment somewhere that he needs somebody of your composition to be able to carry out. So there is an assignment for which God sent you here. You are put together. You are custom made. You are packaged in heaven to, for an assignment. You are not packaged just for your name to be called Sunday or for your name to be called Victor or for your name to be called Princess or for your name to be called Christina or for your name to be called John or Andrew or anything. It is that is not the purpose for which you were created. You were created for a purpose, for a higher purpose, for you to be able to do something here on earth. It was later when you got to the earth that they gave you a name. So your name is not the identity that God has. So that's why when we, when we die from earth, we are going to get a new name. The Bible talks about a new name we are going to get. And I think that our new name in heaven is going to have something to do with our mission on earth, with our destiny on earth. So your name that you are going to be called in heaven is not going to be what your mother and your father are called you here. You know, your name is going to be in line with what you were created to do initially. Your name and your, the, your new name name in the in heaven in the kingdom of heaven is going to have something to do with the assignment for which you are created so there is no one that comes to this world without having an assignment on his head and your assignment is not that you are christina your assignment is not that you are john your assignment is not andrew your assignment is not ufoma your assignment is not elizabeth your assignment is not your name your name is not your assignment that is just what people have called you now it is your duty to look into yourself, to look into your composition, and to discover what your assignment is, and to look into your environment as well, to look into the situation that have brought you up to where you are today, and then be able to identify what God has called you for and what he has sent you to the world to do. So everyone here is here for a purpose. Everyone here is on assignment. And if you don't know your assignment yet, if you don't know your purpose yet, if you don't know your goal, your mission for which you are sent here to the earth yet, no problem about it. You know, like I said, I've written a book on that. And uh, the book is Who Am I? Who Am I? Why Am I Here? And then, of course, you could also go to, to my blog, Sunday at DaylightYearBlog.com and go in there and look at in the video blog and see all the list of the series of the teachings I've done. One of those series is called How to Discover Your Calling or How to Find Your Calling or the Calling Series. It's called the Calling Series. So make sure you do everything that you must do, everything that is needed to be done to discover what your assignment is about. Because if you are here on earth and you don't know what you are here for, it's, just, it's not just a waste of time. Yes, on one hand it's a waste of time, but it's also a, a, a murdering, an assassination, an assassination of purpose. You are assassinating your purpose. You are assassinating your destiny. You are assassinating your life. 
if you don't manage to discover what you are sent here for you are going to be a waste and you are going to be a disappointment not just to yourself but you are going to be a disappointment to god almighty can you imagine how much resources god has put in you for you to be able to be who you are he has put in you the wisdom he's giving you the capacity he's giving you putting you the skills he's putting you the you know, your understanding the he's giving, putting you the soul he's putting you the emotions he's giving you the the, the 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 willpower is putting you your feelings is putting you your spirit is putting you your soul is putting you your mind is putting you your brain and all of these things that god has put in you yeah they are massive even an eye alone can you imagine that opting out with all the technology that we have and with all the advancement of science we science can is not been capable of producing even an eye even the whole of science, medic, medicine cannot produce an eye. And God put eye in you, he put nose in you, he put mouth in you, he put life in you, he put everything in you. Do you think that he just put all of that in you just for your, for you just come, come here and just live a trivial life anyhow you want it? Do you think God put all that in you just for you to just waste your life here and just, you know, you, you just scatter it anyhow you want and just, you know, without giving any, him any report back, without coming back to him with any, you no, know, with any report, without fulfilling the agenda for which he sent you here? Do you think that will make him happy? No, God is not going to be happy. So that is why the topic of today is so vital and so crucial. Because if the bottom line of why you were created is to carry out an assignment here on earth, if the bottom line of why you were created is to fulfill purpose, then is your life, is your total life built around that vision or not? Is your total life your daily activities and your daily routine, routines, are they all built around the vision, around the, the, the assignment, around the purpose, around the work that you are here to do? If you, you know, remember, remember, if you are here for the purpose of fulfilling God's destiny, if you are here for the purpose of fulfilling God's assignment, then it means that that assignment should be supreme over every other thing. That you get your, you find yourself doing here on earth. So if the reason why you are here is for an agenda, for a purpose, I mean, just like saying somebody sent you from wherever you are living, from your city to another city to deliver a message, to carry out an assignment, and gave you money and gave you all the equipment and equipped you with resources. Go over there and you know spend one week there and do this and this for me while you are there. And then you come, let's say you are living in, in Lagos, Nigeria, and God sent you to UK, to England, London, UK, gave you the billet, I mean, gave you the ticket, gave you the passport, gave you the uh, pocket money, gave you all the money that you need, all the resources, gave you the money for your trip, for your hotel, just gave you all the supply that you need to be able to carry out the assignment. And you are supposed to be there for one year and while you are there and then you go and then go to london and got carried away by the new things that you are saying there oh we don't have a because you don't have a, a, an underground system uh, you don't have an underground system in nigeria in africa and so you decided to have an underground system in uh I mean, to, to go and have a look at the underground system in London. And then you got carried away, not looking at underground and taking photographs. Then we don't have the Buckingham Palace in in uh, in in Nigeria. So you got and saw the Buckingham Palace and began to take the photograph of Buckingham Palace. And then you saw the Eiffel or whatever, you know, bridge they are having there. And then you went there to the bridge and just sitting down there every day and just enjoying the bridge and enjoying the sight of London and uh, just going as a tourist. <laughs> you just turn yourself to a tourist. <laughs> and the money they gave you to, to use to, to accomplish the purpose for which you have been sent, 
to London, you are just using it as a tourist. You stay in the hotel, then you discover that, oh, in the hotel you have swimming pool, you go and swim. You discover that, oh, in the hotel they have casino, oh, you go to casino and play something and you waste of some of them, you, you know. <laughs> and, you know, you do all kind of things that you need to do just to enjoy yourself. So, so now they're asking you, what happened? You say, but that's what everybody I went with are doing, you know. <laughs> so you think you have an argument? So you think you have an excuse that that's what everybody is doing. Everybody, you know, as soon as I landed in London like this and I came out of the airport, I saw a bus, double decker bus, and they say, anybody goes to London, the city of London, tourism, tourism for the city. You want to see the London Bridge? You want to see the Buckingham Palace? You want to see this other place? You want to see this other place? Go, 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 coming, coming. And then you say, okay, because they are calling, it's not my photo. I just. <laughs> It's not my photo. Don't be my photo. You just want, go, go, as, I, as soon as I came out like this, <laughs> as soon as I came out like this, you know, the people themselves just appeared. The tourist guards, they just appeared themselves. And they are the ones who invited me. I didn't even really ask anybody. They are the ones who invited me. I said I should enter to the bus. So I entered to the bus. And then they said the hotel was going to cause this. And then the tourism is going to cause this. Then they, they said this is a good place to look at. That's a good place to look at. And I kept on looking. And you spend one year like that. You spend the whole money. <laughs> you spend the whole money of the poor guy. And then you are returning to Lagos. And you are saying, so where is my assignment? What are the, how are the contracts? How many contracts have you signed? You have a contract care. Which contract? But I gave you an assignment. Why did you go there in the first place? That's exactly, we are laughing. I see some of you laughing now. <laughs> but that's exactly the story that some of us will be telling God when we get to heaven. So that story about the, Lon about the guy that was sent from London, Lagos to London is your story. Can you imagine that God packaged you in heaven for an assignment here on earth? So that London is, I mean, that London is here on earth. And that place where, from where you are being sent is heaven. So we were all sent from heaven to come here to the earth for a given assignment, to fulfill a given assignment. So then we came here and think we have an excuse. What excuse do we have? Oh, but everybody is just doing the same thing. Everybody is going to marry, so I'm getting, I got married. Everybody is going to school, I went to school. Everybody gets, going to, get, got a job, I got a job. Everybody working, I'm working. That's all. What else do I need to do? What, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? I just doing what everybody around me did. My father told me that. My brothers told me. Every one of my relatives told me. The what they told me to do, that's, that's what I did. And what did I do wrong? That is exactly how some of us are going to be behaving in eternity when we meet with God and God begins to answer, I mean, ask us questions and, and, and demand from us. Why are we here? Why are we doing what we are doing? You know, so you don't have an excuse. You shouldn't say you have an excuse by saying, okay, because everybody, everybody is just running. Everybody is trying to make a living. So you are trying to make a living. So that means you have an excuse. Or everybody is just trying to survive. So, so that's why you two are trying to survive. So you have an excuse. And you are thinking, oh, but I have, but I'm mad. Oh, God. Oh, my father, you know, you understand, you know, I don't have, a, I don't have, a, I don't have a time. I don't have time to fulfill the thing you sent me here. So what are you doing with your time? Oh, you know, you, you remember you yourself, you are the one who gave me the husband that I have now. So with me and my husband, we gave birth to three children. So I mean, how do you expect me to do the calling again after I've been busy with the children? Is the children who, just, are you not the one who blessed me with the children? Is the children that you have blessed me with that is making me to sit down at home? Or, ah, I, well, so if, if I go to do this assignment or seek for the kingdom of God, so who will take care of these children? Or if I go to, you know, uh, go, go and be doing the ministry or whatever calling that you have given unto me, so how will I be happy in family? My husband will not be happy. So, so that is going to be some of the excuses that we are going to be thinking that we get, we have. And some of you will be saying, oh, but I've got to work. At my but children have got to go to college. You know, if you don't go to college, they will not make a living. And, you know, uh, and I've got to go to work. It is costing 40,000 U.S. dollars to go to college, to send a child to college. So we must send our children to college. And they gotta, uh, so, so I must work. And then, oh, the bills. Oh, the bills. Father, you know, I, you know, I love you. I love you. I really wanted to serve you. I would have liked to serve you without my heart. You know, you know my heart. You know my heart. You know, but the bills. This country, the bills, ah, the bills, eh? 
If not for the, ah, if the bills, I didn't even have time at all. The bills are too much. Ah, I needed to. If I don't pay that bill, they will shake me out of the house. That is the kind of talk that some of us will be giving to God when, when, when in the day of judgment. Because we'll be thinking we have an excuse. So now, for you not to, for your life not to become this story of war, and for your life not to become like the stories I'm saying here now, I'm telling here, there is only one way out. You must build your life. You must make your life, you must, you must, um, you must build up your life in routines. You must build up your life in routines. Your life must be in routines. I hope you understand what I mean. So your life should not just be chaotic. Your life should not just be uh, spontaneous or lacking direction. That is how many people live, but you don't have to be like that. Don't You cannot say you have an excuse why your life is chaotic, why your life is not organized. It's because everybody is living an unorganized life. Because your life is, uh, you know, just like every other person. Uh, so I'm talking about routine. Now, somebody is saying discipline. No, uh, routine is different from discipline. You might need discipline in the process, but I'm talking about routine. You must, you must, um, we must, you know, put your life in, in, in segments, in, in uh, compartments. We must put your life in compartments. We have to, you, you have to put your life in compartments. You have to uh, put your life into uh, blocks. You must have block. You must, be, you know, be, be, you must see your life in blocks. Uh, unfortunately, too many people are seeing their life as a vague thing. You must put your life in divisions, in departments, in command, uh, compartments. You must um, break down your life into blocks. And to some people, this is, um, this is totally a foreign concept. This is a totally foreign concept for some people. Most of us see our lives as... Um, just as a vague thing, my life. I am living. I'm living a life. I'm, and what that means is that they just wake up and sleep. That they just see that I'm living. For them, they are living and they are doing uh, that. They are doing what what they find themselves doing. That is what I call a chaotic life. That is a chaotic life. You don't live like that. I mean, only losers and failures live like that. Don't just live your life as, as in where, where life puts you. Don't live your life where life puts you. Don't live your life where life puts you. Your life must be seen in segments. You must see your life in segments. You must see your life in compartments, in departments. You must not just see your life as me, that's all. And that's how some people, uh, unfortunately, that's how some other people live. They live their lives and they see their lives even. They view their lives as just, um, they just see their lives as me. That's just me. Me. Me, comfort. Me, uh, you know, OB, me, uh, Fumi, me, Pat, me, Martin, me, just me. That's my life. And some other people see their lives like me, my husband, my children, my family. And that's life to them. That's all unfortunate. That is all unfortunate. So my question to you right now is... How do you view life? How do you view your life? How do you view your life? What is life to you? What is your life to you? Okay, so 
But let me tell you, your life must be seen in routine. Your life must be seen in routine. And your life must be placed in routine. And for your life to be seen in routine, there are some steps that you must take. There are some things you must understand. First of all, you must see your life as... Mm, you must see your life in measurement. You must see your life in measurement. So first of all, you must see your life in measurement. You must see your life as something measurable. So you must see your life as something measurable. So what that means is that you stop and you say, okay, my life is in totality 70 years. So let me say my life is going to be for 70 years, let's say 100 years, put any figure you want. Okay, let's say 70 years, that's what God told us that in the average. So my life is going to be, it's measurable. So I'm going to live only 70 years. Unfortunately, because of our religious background, this breaks my heart. Many Christians that I know they have been so brainwashed by religion. And religiosity has just made us to be absolutely useless. Religiosity has made our lives to be utter useless, totally useless. And because of religiosity, not Christianity, but religiosity, because of religiosity, we don't even think like this. We don't even uh, put our lives in compartments. We don't put our lives in blocks. Anyway, so the first thing you must understand about life is that your life must is measurable. But religion has told some people that you no, know, don't don't measure your life because you will die. Don't count your life because you might die young. That you don't want to die young, or so it's the will of God, or it's what God wants that will happen. So just leave it to God. Don't even think about that. And another thing is that when for you to measure your life, to see your life as something measurable, means to constantly think of death. And religion also has taught people not to think of death. How would that then maximize my life while I don't think of death? If I would not think of death, how will I be able to know what I'm so, supposed to do when? How am, I going, how am I going to plan my life if I'm not going to th think about death? Definitely you have to think of death, regularly think of death. If you don't think of death, you will never be able to measure your life. Your life will just be like an accident. So you just, your life is just a chaotic kind of thing, a spontaneous or... Illusion. Life will just be a kind of illusion, a kind of myth, myth. Just a kind of mystery, just a kind of abstract. But you yourself, you are responsible from taking a hold of your life, taking it from the world of abstractness. Deliver your life yourself from the life of abstractness. Deliver yourself from abstract. Deliver your life from abstract life. You must cease. You must stop. You must press the stop. No, stop. You must press the stop button when it comes to your life that I am no more going to live a life of abstract. I am no more going to live an abstract life in Jesus. I am stopping an abstract life right now. And to stop living an abstract life, it means... To come from the sphere, to come down to the earth, to come down to the earth, come on the ground, come to the earth, put your feet on the ground. It means to live the life of illusions, the life of dreams, and the life of expectations, empty expectations, the life to live the life of, uh, you know, fantasy and mirage. So you must depart the life of mirage. You must separate yourself from the life of abstract, the life of illusion, from the life of abstract, the life of mirage. You must separate yourself from the mirage of life, from the illusion of life, from the abstract of life. 
and you yourself must bring your life to the sphere of concreteness. Concrete, concreteness. You must bring your life back to a measurable a measurable department of life, a measurable compartment of life. You must make your life, understanding of life to be measurable, to be tangible. Life to you must become tangible. Life to you must become measurable. Life to you must become something concrete, not something vague, not something illusionist, illusionary, not something you know unimaginable somewhere, not something abstract somewhere. You must stop the abstract living. You must stop the abstract life. You must st stop the illusionary life. You must make your life something concrete and measurable. So let's say the first thing you, you begin to think about is to, in terms of life, is to think that my life is measurable. I'm only here for a short time. Now, let's say you are here for, uh, if you know that you are here for 70 years, you know that out of that 70 years, from 50 or from 60, you'll be weak or you'll be weaker. After 50, you are not going to be as effective. So you want to measure, you, mo you want to you know, put the assignments of your life in the most active part of your life, in the most active. Like I said, we are all here to carry out an assignment. We are all here to carry out a mission. We are all here to fulfill purpose. There is an assignment on your life. God created you for something. You are not just created so just be here and don't know what you are here for. Before you were born, before he gave birth to you, before he even created you, your mother's womb, he had an assignment for you. He had a mission for you. Don't let any church tell you rubbish that you can't have your own vision. Don't let any church tell you any rubbish that if you have your own vision, that is the vision. Don't let any church deceive you that you can only be de devoted to the, your pastor's vision, that you can only have one vision in the house. Don't let any denomination deceive you and just make you, make you into some bunch of flesh that are not having any eternal purpose in them. Don't let anybody tell you that if, by building their vision, that is how you build your life. Don't let anybody tell you that their, only, their vision is the only thing that you are here for, that you don't have your own vision, that you don't have your own destiny. Don't, let, don't believe those lies. Let religion set yourself free from the grip of religion. Don't let religion destroy your life. Don't let religion bring you to emptiness. Don't let religion just make you into somebody that only comes to church every week and pay the tithe and offering and you don't have any more thing to contribute to life. Value your life the way the Creator has valued that life. Value your life the way the person who gave you that life valued that life. Value your life. Begin to value your life to the extent that God himself who created you, who made you valuable, who gave you life and the essence of life, let, let begin to see life, your life, the way he sees. <sighs> so, once you know that your life is measurable, the next thing you want to go about, to be measurable, it means to talk about death. Okay, you know that. That, okay, let's say you live after 50, 50 years old. But thinking about measurable as well, you also know that we will not all make it. We will, all, we will not all make it to 70 years. So for me, what I advise my disciples to do and my followers to do is to put up a, a, a life plan for themselves, to plan their lives such that they will be able to finish their life purpose by 40 years old. If not to finish their life purpose by 40, but to at least latest, the worst plan should be such that at 50, you have already done everything that you plan to do for yourself and your own lifetime. You must have already carried out everything that you could say that you would like, you have liked to do. So by 50, put a plan in place. Maybe it's, God, God is always going to ex exceed your plans. God will always go beyond your plans. But at least have a plan whereby at 40, your dream has already been accomplished. At, f uh, at, at 45, 50, it's been cemented. So by the time you get to 50, you are ready to die. But in my own case, 
I planned my life in such a way that by the time I was 40, I would be ready to die if anything happens. So that I'll be ready to die by 40. But by 50, I'm only cementing everything. By 50, I finish everything that I dreamt to do in my life. But you see how God exceeds our, our plans, how God does better and more than we could ever imagine. Now that I'm 50, God is re 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 restarting for me, is reigniting my life. So everything that I really wanted to do personally, now for my life, I've done it. But at 50, I'm 50, going to be 50 next year, mm -hmm. and that is when God is challenging me to move over to Nigeria, to move back to Africa. So I finished everything that I wanted to do. Now I'm starting the extra thing that God plans for me to do. So, so for you to really live a, a life that will make, that, will, that, will, that is a, a, an effective life like I'm talking about right now, so that you'll be able to know at what age you are fulfilling your purpose, your assignment that God has sent you here. For you to be able to plan out your life so that at 40 you know exactly what you are achieving. But at 45 you know what results you are going to have. At 50 you know you have finished all your life assignment. For you to be able to talk like that so confidently, there is a condition to it. And that condition is the ability to build your life activities, your daily activities around your routine, around your routines. So now let's come again. Once you know what you are supposed to do. So let's say you are 40 now or you are 35 or you are 20 or you, whatever. So you plan your life till 50 or till 60 if you want. If you are starting late, you could still plan till 60 or you could still plan till 70. But it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it depends on how old you are, okay? But I was just talking in the ideal scenario. The ideal scenario is for you to plan your life in such a way that by 40, you are through. And by 50, you are just enjoying life. But, you know, but if you are starting so late, you could still do kind of that kind of plan and make sure that you plan everything out so much, such that, you know, by the 60, you finish what you, what you plan to do on earth or by 70, you know, it doesn't matter how, how much you are planning. But the other thing you need to do is that once everything is planned like that, then that is when the world I was looking for uh, compartmentalize, that is where that comes into, into, into play. So you have to put your life in compartments. You've got to now put your life in compartments. Like for example, I said, I'm living till I'm 50 years old. Since I was 30 years old, I, I've had my own life planned out altogether uh, to the end of my life. To, to, I'm, I'm living my life for the next 300 years. I have planned my life for the next 300 years after I, I, I'm dead. So, so let's say, uh, so, so, but in that 300 years of my life is in compartments, is in, is in fragments and in blocks. So let's say, let's just take my life between 30 and 70. So for example, I have what exactly what my life is supposed to be, the full understanding of my life between 30 to 40. Then I have, that's one department, that's one compartment of my life. Then between 40 to 45 is another compartment of my life. Then from 45 to 50 is another compartment of my life. All right. Then from 50 to 60 is another compartment of my life. It's another block of my life. Then from 60 to 70 is another compartment and block of my life as well. So that's what I'm talking about. That you must not just see your life as a vague thing. You must not just see your life as just one abstract thing. But you must see your life, you know, in segment. You know exactly what you want to establish and accomplish between 30 and 35 and between 35 and 40. So you know exactly what you are focusing on. So once you know that, what you are focusing on and what you are targeting and what are the goals that you want to attain. If you people have problem with this, if you don't know how to plan out your life like this, maybe one day I'm going to do a series on this to help you plan out your life and live a life, you know, and know how to organize your life and make your life meaningful. I, I think I, I have a book on that. I have a book on that, but it's in Russian. I think somebody we've given somebody to help us translate it. But anyway... So once you know what you are doing between 30 and 40, between 40 and 50 and all that, once you have a picture and a dream and a plan 
for your life in fragments and in departments and in compartments, in blocks, then it's easier for you to now, let's say for example, uh, somebody is saying, what is God's input in my plan? God's input in your plan is the purpose, the original. You must find out what is God's purpose. Once you find out what God's purpose is, everything is originating from God. You'll find out what God's plan, what God's purpose is for your life. But God doesn't give you the detailed plan, the, uh, the segments and the compartments and the blocks. and the, It doesn't give you day-to-day -day plan. It doesn't even give you, it just gives you a calling. It just gives you an assignment. God just gives you the general concept of what you're supposed to do on earth. Now, it is now your duty and your responsibility to now break it down, to now calculate it, to now use your mind. He has given us the mind of Christ, to now use that mind of Christ, to now put it in groups, in departments, in compartments, and to now break it down. So once you now have exactly the picture Let's say the next 10 years of your life, you have exactly what must be done. So let, let me tell you the next thing you have to do. Once, let's say you are 40 now, between your 40 and 50, you want to know, I mean, let's say you want to, be, you are supposed to, let's just take people, whatever, it might be business. Let's say you are doing business and you need to touch, you need to touch 1 million people. Let's say your goal is to touch, to, to touch 1 million people in the next 10 years. And... Uh, maybe you are a pastor, you also need to touch 1 million people. So let, we'll just take 1 million people as our target in 10 years, all right? Because it doesn't matter what you are doing. If you are a teacher, you will need to touch 1 million people. If you are, a, if you want to change the life of people, you, you need to touch 1 million people. Maybe it doesn't matter. Even if you are a businessman or you are a politician, you need to touch 1 million people. So let's say <laughs> the, your target is to touch 1 million people in the next 10 years. So that is, at least we know that this is our department this is our compartment this compartment of my life is when i am targeting one million people in the next 10 years so what do you do what is routine routine is and uh, you have to take the amount of time you have which is 10 years you have 10 years and you have to take the goal that you have put before you in that 10 years the goal you have put before yourself is one million people and you have 10 years so what do you do you divide 10 years by 1 million people. But since 10 years is just 10, let's put it in months. How many months would that be? 120 months, right? 120 months divided by, let's divide 1 million by 120 months. So you know, you know, yeah, 100, so you divide 1 million by 120 months. That would mean like 10, uh, what? So that's like 8,000. You know that you have to reach 8,000 uh, people in, in one month. So you need to reach 8,000 people in one month. So that is a calculation right there. So that is a department as well, a compa compartment. So you know, you know, I need to reach 8,000 people every month. Now it is much more easier for you to take 8,000 people and divide it by 30. So let's take 8,000 and divide 8,000 uh, by 30 because let's say 30 days in a month and you have 8,000 how much do we have? 277 so you now know that your advertisement or your publicity or your work must reach out to 277 in a day in a day so yeah that's in a day so every day you are no you know that everything I do I must reach out to that 277 people. How do I do that? Then I need to find out, is it television that is better? Is it radio that is better? Is it internet that is better? Is it seminar that is better? Is it teaching that is better? Is it church that is better? Is it leaders? Maybe it's better for me to prepare leaders. Maybe it's better. So you find out all those things that you need to do to be able to, that will deliver you 277 people in a day. So you, you might, then you, you, you find out one, two, three, four, five things. If I would do these five things in a day, I will touch those people. And then maybe you want to have backup plan. Okay, not just those five things I will do. I will do another backup plan for another thing, no, five things to do. So those will become your routine. Those are the things we call routine. What is routine? Routine, therefore. Routine, therefore, are the things that you do on daily basis 
that automatically bring you to your target, purpose, or goal. So if you want, if and we are talking about problems and resolving people's problems, and you can use your platform or your instrument that you are using to resolve people's problems by the business or preaching or ministry or you know charity or or you know anything you do, just anything you do. So you know that you are reaching. You want to resolve the problem of two hundred or three hundred people every day, two hundred and seventy-seven people every day. Well, that is how you just make sure that you put it in system. Don't just put it in passion. Don't just make it remain desire. Don't just make it remain you no know, wishful thinking. Don't just make that desire remain you no know, hope. Don't just sit down there and be praying that God help me to reach 370. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And I call for these 300 and something people every day in the name of Jesus. Let the Spirit of God go and bring them. Let all those are, you know. I mean, God can do anything. Of course, we know God can do anything, but wait a minute. You know, we are not magicians, okay? And even though God could do anything, but first of all, you must have done your best. Make sure that you have done the best that you could do. Make sure that you have put your plans in place. Make sure that you have done your very, very best before you begin to call on God for miracles. I mean, when God needed to, when Jesus needed to do a miracle, the miracle of feeding the 5,000, I mean, he built a system as well. He told people that they should uh, sit people down 50, 50, 50 people each and to put them and make them in 100 rows. So Jesus was very strategic. He was very systematic. He didn't just say, because I know God and I, I'm able to bring the food, I'm able to do the miracle, then I will just do the miracle in the middle of chaos. I mean, of chaos. You know, God knows that the miracle you do in the middle of, in the midst of chaos will also be chaotic. You create more problems. So God knows that if you really want your life to be meaningful and to be productive, you must put it in system. So Jesus did not do that miracle of feeding the 5,000 until the system has been placed, put in place. So he first of all made sure that his disciples went and and divided the people into groups. Do you know how many hours they had spent doing that? They spent so many hours dividing the people into compartments, into groups, into the group of 50 each. Then, after dividing them into the group of 50, then they have to put them in 100 rows. 100 rows. That is how you get 5,000. Now, they are well organized. They are well no, 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 compartmentalized and then now he could now you know they could now he could now release the miracle working power of god uh, and then the, 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 the multiplication could come why because the system that is on ground could hold the the increase that will come the system on ground will be able to sustain the the, the provision and the miracle that god is going to bring but sometimes we don't on that we don't we think that god is just chaotic god no god is not chaotic god is not chaotic and we too must learn to use our mind. We, the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. We need to learn to put that mind of Christ in, into operation. So, but the, the bottom line of what I'm saying, I didn't plan to talk to you about you know what a routine is and what a, and all those things. But I thought everybody should know it. But I'm saying that I needed to explain it anyway. But the real message I want to pass across, I'll try to do that in the next five minutes. The real message is that. Your life on daily basis must be lived in such a way that any activity you do is facilitating your movement to your goal. That, like for example, I went, I was going to for my swimming today, and on my way to to my to the swimming pool, I don't have a swimming pool in my house because so we have a, I have a swimming pool where I need to drive to for thirty minutes. <laughs> So on my way to the swimming pool, I make sure that even on my way to the swimming pool, I am fulfilling my purpose. Every day. So I could take somebody with me that we are walking as we go. Or I could go by myself and I'm writing a book as I go. Or I'm editing a book. Or I'm editing a speech. Or I'm doing it, preparing my message. So everything I am doing, even though I am going to work on my body, you know, to do swimming pool, that's for the body. But even in the process, I am adding value to myself. Even when I am eating, 
I am adding value to myself. So what, what I'm trying to say here is a bit different from conversion. What I'm saying here is that your life, okay, let's say out of 100, let's say you have eight hours in a day or 16 hours, I don't know. Let's say out of all the time you have in a day, you must make sure that at least 60%, between 40 to 60% of it is devoted to activities or, yeah, activities that will lead to your assignment, to fulfilling of your assignment. So, no, I don't know how many, how many, so you must know how many activities do you have in a day and how, what are those activities and how many of those activities are leading you directly to fulfill your plan. And are they by accident that you are doing those activities or they are intentionally planned? Now, routine must be intentionally planned, connected. Like I said, now I was saying 1 million people in 10 years. And I said, for, I've calculated it such that uh, 277 people will be reached on a daily basis. It is only if I reach 277 people on a daily basis uh, for the next, for the next uh, 10 years, for the next 10 years, or for the next 8 years or 9 years, only if I do that uh, assignment and I reach 277 people for the next 10 years on a daily basis, then I will get to my goal. Then I know that at the end of the day, I have the, the, ten, the, the 1 million people. But I must intentionally, I know that if I miss one day, I, I, I'm, I'm out of my plan. So my routine is, you know, I will put my activities in such a way that automatically I am doing those things. Routines are what I do automatically. So I block every other thing. I put my regime, I put activities around me such that it's, it's just like saying you are going in a straight line like this. You can either be going in a straight line or you can branch it. You can branch it, you can branch it, you can branch it. There are a lot of other things that will be there to distract you. There are many other things that will be there to call for your attention. But what a rot rot routine is, is that you put, you know, blockages, you put boundaries all around yourself. So you know that on Monday I'm doing this, 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 this. Or every day between this time and this time I'm working on this, 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 this. On Tuesday I'm working on this. On Wednesday I'm working on this. On Thursday I'm working on this. So on daily basis I am doing concrete things that are bringing me to the I goal that I have stipulated that day. 275 people. I'm So every other thing, they are out of my attention. They are out of my routine. So my routines are the activity, not just at the activities that I do on a daily basis. No, the true routine are the activities that I do that bring me to the fulfillment. So, for example, I might have many activities that I do every day, but, but only two activities produce for me 277 people. So only those two activities are the most important activities in my life that day. Only those activities that will produce 277 people for me, they are my, they are my only, they are my most important activities. All other activities are good, you know, kiss your wife, you know, kiss, kiss your children, you know, love them and all that. They are all good. But my life must be built around these particular activities that bring me to make sure, to make, help me make sure that I get to my goal. The routine are the activities that I do that are bringing me to my fulfillment, to the fulfillment of my, 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 my plan, my purpose, my, my agenda, my life assignment. So the other activities might be good, they, they are not bad, but the, the routine ones are the ones that I do automatically. But I must not just make them targeted activities, but I must make them routine activities. What is the difference between routine activities and targeted activities? Targeted activities, I might be doing that once in a while when I have the the emotion or the willingness or the the spirit or the anointing or the inspiration but routine is i have i've put everything all around me to just make me move in that direction to just make me do those things so if i wake up even if i'm not, i don't feel like waking up the, my routine will cause me to wake up i mean my okay for example me i don't i don't i didn't feel like going to for swimming today but because it's in my routine and you know just for example yeah 
Okay, for example, I came back from swimming. Let, let's forget about that. I came back from swimming and I needed to rest before I do this, my training. But I, I because my, my routine says that I must meet with some of my team members here, some, some leaders from my church, from our church. So the leaders meeting is for six o'clock. And I came back from swimming 15 minutes to six. I needed to quickly dress, even, even though I was dressing and changing and taking my shower, but my everything is already going off. My secretary is calling, my computer is going off, my you know, assistants are calling, the, my you know, computer, my email, everything is just going off. You must, everybody, so ev even if I don't want to, everything is pushing me to, to go and do my routine. It's just like here also now, they are there in the meeting, with, you know, they are supposed to be with me, and because my routine is nine o'clock, it doesn't matter, even though the meeting is still going on, or it was still going on when I left, but I don't have any option. It's my routine that I must go and and do my, my live broadcast. So routine are the things that you have put yourself in a corner. You have, you know, make yourself to be subjected to them. You make yourself to be, to be you know, you subdue yourself. I mean, you subject yourself to your routine. Your routine are the things that you cannot hide from. It's, it's not taking your own permission. It, they are things that you put around you to make you, to make sure that you are doing that thing on a regular basis. So, for example, on Mondays, I know that on Mondays, I must do this, 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 and this. On Tuesdays, I know I must do this, this, and this. On Wednesdays, I know I must do this, this, and this. And then there are some things that I do every day. Yeah, those are your constraints. So you put constraints around yourself. So, and the purpose of the constraints is to make sure that you are only going to be doing activities that will push you and make you to come back, I mean, to come to fulfill the same goals and agendas that you have put before yourself. Now, you have another part of your, you know, you have another 40% of your life that you, you know, go to work or you go to do your uh, job or you go to, I don't believe in going to job, but maybe you go to do your job and you go for, you give your family, you give your friends, let 40% be free. Let there be 40% that of your time that you could maneuver any hour you want so that you don't push yourself into stress and into depression. So let 40% always be free. But you only use 60% of your time for your goal. But if you are somebody that is still working, that is still having a job, and you don't control your life, and you are, st you are, you are still under that system of the world, and you have not been able to come out of that yet, then what you do is that, you know, make sure that with your job and everything, 60% goes there. But take then 40% of the day for yourself. 40% of your free day to, to pursue your goal and your... So then you have to really work out a very stringent plan so that 40% of your day on daily, on daily basis is uh, targeted. At, uh, uh, you have built a routine that, you know, all your activities, are, all those routines are about your assignment. So 40% of your day could be used if you are still working. So, so that's the meaning of the message of today. Your life routine must be built around your life assignment. So don't just build your life. You know how many people build their life routine? M many people's routine is about what their family says. Many people's routine is about their family tradition. Many people's routine is about what their relatives say. Many people's routine is about what their country people want them to do. Many people's routine is about what their job says. So people are building their lives according to what job country job wants, what their employment wants, what their family wants, what their environment wants, what their culture wants, what their country desires. So, and the reason why we do that is because the whole world system knows that we are not in control. Since you are not in control of your life, you are not in charge, that is how you just become manipulated. You are just maneuvered and you are just manipulated to doing what other people want and what you, everybody else wants you to do rather than doing what your life purpose and your life agenda really desires for you to do. So, uh, the, you know, routine is a, is a system that will put you, that will help you to put uh, constraints in place and borders in place so that you'll be able to, those routines will be not, I'm not talking about routine of going to do, wash your teeth every day or taking your shower every day. Those are mundane routines. We are not even counting them. I'm talking about routines that 
are facilitating your fulfillment of your purpose. The routines that are working for you, that are making you to work only for yourself. The routines that are leading you and making you to fulfill your destiny. The routines that are leading you to solve the problem for which you have been sent to the earth. The routines that are automatically making you to fulfill destiny and to, to, to accomplish God's assignment and goals for your life. 